Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and hang on a second, what's going on with this matchmaking? No carriers, they haven't even managed to sneak in a hybrid, no radar so the destroyers will actually be able to play and well, there is a submarine on each side. But they're only tier 6 submarines so the bullshit should be kept to an absolute minimum, I mean we, we shouldn't be seeing any submarines travelling underwater twice as fast as the torpedoes that they were supposed to carry. There's an excellent chance that Floco Loco here, in the Russian Tier 8 battleship, the Lenin, might actually have a good game. As should everybody else in this battle. In fact, with no carriers, not even any hybrids, no radar, and only one submarine per team, it's going to be interesting to see what excuses everybody comes up with <laughs> to justify their terrible play. Uh, anyway... Tier 8 domination battle here on the estuary map. I wonder why they call it the estuary map. There isn't an estuary on this map. <laughs> you know what an estuary is, right? It's a river mouth. Show me the river on this map. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Anyway, so... Tier 8 domination battle here on the increasingly inaccurately named estuary map. I mean, it's a tier 8 battle. There are obviously some tier 6s and tier 7s involved. Uh, Floco Loco himself is in a tier 8 Russian battleship, the Lenin. Or as I like to call it, the Nelsky, because, you know, HMS Nelson. Forward gun battery layout. Whatever. Anyway. Tier 8 battle, but obviously there are some tier 6s and 7s in play. I'm not seeing anything hugely imbalanced in the team lists. I mean, Floco Loco's team have the misfortune of having a USS Kansas, where the enemy team have a Lenin, so... Mm, yeah, okay. Also, the enemy team have a Belfast, whereas Floco Loco's team have a Helena, but the Helena isn't a bad ship, it's just that the Belfast is a very, very, very good ship. But there isn't really anything in this battle that you could point to and say, oh, well, clearly the matchmaker had it in for us. I mean, they haven't stacked all of the radar on one team, for example. They haven't managed to sneak two carriers in under the radar to give one team two carriers in the shape of a pair of battleship hybrids and the other team no carriers. You know, there's none of that. These are basically nice, good, fair, even teams. Oh wait, hang on a minute. The enemy team have a Tona, Japanese tier 8 hybrid heavy cruiser. So technically they do have an aircraft carrier. <laughs> well, no, no, it's not the same. The hybrid cruisers aren't the same as the hybrid battleships. The hybrid battleships do actually perform like aircraft carriers, but with the hybrid cruiser, um, the airstrikes are on such a long cooldown. I mean, they're more of a consumable than an actual squadron. So it's not really the same. Wargaming, you're not making this easy for me, are you? <laughs> I'm trying desperately to showcase a battle where the matchmaker didn't fuck one team. It's like you're going out of your way to make it harder than it needs to be for me. Anyway, we'll persevere. So, it's a fairly even start. Both teams started with one cap circle. Both teams are in the process of claiming an extra cap. Or at least they were. The enemy team have flipped Alpha, so they now have two cap circles. But the friendly capture over at Delta has just been interrupted by a combination of the enemy... Akatsuki outspotting the Ognavoy, who was trying to flip the cap. I mean, that's understandable. But he's now been chased out of the cap circle completely by what initially appears to be an extremely brave enemy, Dallas, going up against a Nagato at close range like that. But the Dallas knows something that the Nagato doesn't. Akatsuki torpedoes were on the way. <laughs> so, first blood to the enemy team. One kill, two, and soon to be three caps ahead. And it's at this point where Floco Loco equalises and blows the Leander clean out of the water. But it is just a cruiser kill and it's only tier 6, so it's not worth as many points as a battleship. And just as I'm trying to explain how, for once, the matchmaker <laughs> didn't, didn't... Come on, Wargaming, work with me here! <laughs> as the cruiser that's not an aircraft carrier as well, honest, lands a whole bunch of airdrop torpedoes on Floco Loco's Lenin. Meanwhile, the outcome of the battle at Cap Circle Delta is still really up for grabs, although I'm putting my money on the enemy team. The Ognavoy is attempting to dispute the cap, but it's an Ognavoy. In a cap contest between... Oh, hang on a second. Broadside cruiser to shoot at. 
Come on, baby. There we go. That's why people play battleships, seeing the big numbers. Unless that battleship's armed with torpedoes, of course, as the Zeton and the Turpids both torpedo and sink each other in a drive-by. And then the Toner takes out the friendly submarine, putting the enemy team even further ahead. Although they have not yet managed to take Cap Circle Delta, but in a Cap Circle battle between an Ognavoyan and a Katsuki, you really do have to put your money on the Akatsuki because it's always going to outspot an Ognavoy. The team are doing a reasonable job of delaying the inevitable down there at Delta, however, as Floco Loco lands another huge hit on, oh, the enemy carrier, <laughs> who's managed to go undetected, yes, the Tola. Meanwhile, the team have clawed another kill back. This is now a submarine-free battle, although that does not mean there is no torpedo threat, because when you're chasing a Japanese cruiser, there are always going to be torpedoes. Can he finish off the... Oh yeah, the toner had the opportunity to duck into cover behind the island and zigged when he should have zagged, so hopefully this is going to be a kill. Yes. Right, now there is a Mayhan over there, of course. He was spotted, he's now smoked up, and the Lenin does not have a huge array of consumables that are useful dealing with smoked up destroyers. I mean, he's launched his spotter aircraft. But that's only going to work if they're in the right place at the right time and the Mayhan leaves the smoke screen. And the Mayhan doesn't need to leave the smoke screen to spot Floco Loco because he's spotted anyway. So rather than sail into a huge bunch of Mayhan torpedoes, Floco Loco slows down, changes course, now he doesn't have to worry about the Toner's torpedoes, and keeps that island between himself and any torpedo threat from that very suspicious smoke screen over there. I mean the Mayhan's torpedoes aren't great, but a battleship is a rather big and obvious target, so why take unnecessary chances? Now this is putting him slap into the middle of the gun sights of the enemy Lenin. And the enemy Lenin enjoys a huge health advantage. But the enemy Lenin, let's just say given a broadside like that to shoot at, is not exactly making the most of his formidable armour scheme. And he suffers a 20,000 damage hit as a direct result. There may be mayhap, yep there they are. <laughs> <laughs> wow, who saw those coming? This guy did. Now the enemy Lenin there just did get himself a kill, but he apparently didn't learn anything from the bitch slapping that Floco Loco just administered to him as he's continuing to show broads. <laughs> yep. Doesn't kill him though, which is, you know, disappointing. The bigger issue right now, of course, is going to be that mayhem. And there he is. Focuses the secondaries on the Mayhan, turns the nose in in case the Mayhan has more torpedoes, which of course also allows him to angle against the enemy Lenin. He's got the secondaries focused on the Mayhan, and the Lenin secondaries are terrible during the entire course of this battle. He does less than 2,000 damage with them. But even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day, gets the secondary kill on the Mayhan, allowing him to focus up on the enemy Lenin, who, let me remind you, started this fight on full health less than two minutes ago. The enemy team is still ahead by one kill, but more worryingly, three caps, and they keep threatening to flip that cap at Bravo, which is the only cap that Floco Loco's team, well, they technically have it, but they're not getting any points from it because it's contested, which means the enemy have double the points. They're gonna take Alpha, of course. Oh, and there's the high caliber award. And they're going to claw some points back by sinking this Lenin. And honestly, at this point, it doesn't really matter who kills him, as long as somebody does. Unfortunately, they're not going to take this cap anytime soon, because the Akatsuki managed to get sunk by the Mayhan, so unless the Dallas up to the north does something about it, it's going to be down to Floco Loco. And they still have to actually sink this Lenin first, of course. He's finally figured out that he takes less damage if he angles, although that's not doing any good against the Dallas's high explosive. He's trying to heal up. You can see, I mean, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's trying to get all three guns firing, which is kind of understandable under the circumstances because he knows he's about to die, but that means he is guaranteed to die, regardless of what happens with this salvo, which bounces harmlessly because Floco Loco is angled and the enemy Lenin is not. Wow, and he still doesn't die. Come on. There it is. Wow, they made a meal of that. 
Yeah, I have to say, despite his initial horrific mishandling of the ship, the enemy Lenin, he came good at the end there. I mean, he imposed a, an unacceptable delay on Floco Loco here, and the Dallas is completely ignoring the cap circle at Alpha. It looks like he's heading for Charlie. He's heading for that lot. You know, the cap circle that's defended by a Borodino, a Pensacola, and a, that seems remarkably optimistic of him. I think it's it's extremely likely that the Akatsuki's over there as well. You know, there's an open cap just a couple of kilometres off that Dallas's beam, and instead he's heading for the cap circle that's defended by the entire enemy team. Which, of course, means that Floco Loco is in a battleship is going to have to take that cap circle, because somebody has to take that cap circle. The enemy team are gaining points at triple the rate of Floco Loco's team. The only good news here is that the Belfast on the enemy team, who was in... Uh, cap Circle Bravo there has been sunk. He actually sailed right through the Cap Circle, probably under fire the whole time, and was never realistically going to take it. But while he was in there, he was preventing Floco Loco's team from getting any points from it. Just checking the minimap and trying to figure out what that Dallas is up to. Is he now actually heading for the Cap Circle at Alpha? Because if he is, he's not doing it particularly quickly. Is Floco Loco actually going to have to take the Cap? I mean, he could probably do it as long as the team are spotting targets, because he's in a battleship, his guns have the range, he could sit there in Cap Circle Alpha and just shell targets at long range. He doesn't have a lot of health left, though, and if you have a look at the, uh, the paper doll ship icon, he doesn't actually have any recoverable damage left, so he's going to have to take more damage before he can actually make use of his two remaining heals. Looking at the minimap, it appears that the friendly Dallas is actually going for the cap circle at Alpha, although he took the long way around, but hey, he's doing it now, so that's good. Meanwhile, it looks like the enemy team are doing a very, very aggressive defense of the other two cap circles. The ones at Charlie and Delta, they're not just, well, at least not all of them are just sitting in those cap circles and waiting for Floca Loca's team to come to them. They are aggressively pushing out, in particular the Borodino, Oh, and the Akazuki as well. Oh, yeah, it's an Akazuki, not an Akatsuki. My bad. <laughs> and he's gone undetected. Shit. However, bad news. The Borodino does kill the Bajoni, but the Helena had shots in the air, which found their target and wiped out the Akazuki. So the kills are even, and while the enemy team currently have a cap advantage, thanks to the Dallas finally getting into that cap circle at Alpha, they won't have the cap advantage for long which means Floco Loco's team need kills. And that Dallas clearly saw his life flashing before his eyes as Floco Loco came around the corner. Floco Loco opened up, the Dallas immediately started turning and was able to take those shots on his armor belt, suffering zero damage. The enemy Dallas now has a very tough choice to make because he clearly does not want to continue getting shot at by these 16-inch armor-piercing shells. But in order to do that, he has to duck in behind the island, which will mean giving broadside. And ducking in behind that island is leading him closer and closer into the guns of the enemy Helena. So he really didn't have any good choices to make there, and in fact just becomes Floco Loco's fifth kill, earning him the Kraken Unleashed. That just leaves the Pensacola and the Borodino. The Borodino, who looks as if he's turning around and going after that Helena over by Cap Circle Delta. Which is the sensible choice, because it keeps the Helena out of the last remaining cap circle held by the enemy team and allows them to head south to assist against Floca Loco here, who is now flipping the cap circle at Charlie, with the Dallas heading in this direction as backup. Now this is a really tough spot for that Pensacola to be in. He has no support. Potentially, he's going to be getting shot at by three ships, although the Dallas and the Helena are going to have to move in order to get into range. And the Helena over at Delta might not want to shoot at the risk of giving his position away to the Borodino, so the Pensacola has to reset this cap. And he gets the first salvo off and does reset Floco Loco, but this, of course, means remaining detected. And that means getting shot at. <laughs> With the Lennon 16-inch armor piercing. Oh, the Borodino's been spotted. He is shooting at the Helena, I believe, because the Helena is now in shooting range and is opening up on the Pensacola. That poor Pensacola really has no good options here. He's managed to set a fire. This actually finally gives Floco Loco something to use his damage repair party on. <laughs> and I think the Helena's going to get the kill. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Actually, no. I think, 
Okay, the hell in the mist. Seriously, 140 health? Really? Alright, fine. Floco Loco. Put him out of his misery. Although the Pensacola's done alright, and he's managed to continue resetting this cap circle, and he's inflicted a serious amount of damage on Floco Loco, but there was only one way that was ever going to end. Now that he's actually taken some high explosive and fire damage, Floco Loco can use his damage repair, and he's... well... I mean, despite the Pensacola's best efforts, Floco Loco is really no worse off than he was when he first came around the corner and saw the Dallas and the Pensacola. He is now able to flip this cap circle with some assistance from the Dallas, who has now just arrived. So hopefully it ain't going to take them too long, just another 20 seconds. And that leaves the enemy team... Well, I think it's fairly obvious where the Borodino is. Somebody's flipping the cap circle at Bravo. So at this point, two of the caps are about to change hands, which will leave Floco Loco's team with a two-cap advantage. And with four minutes remaining... That is enough time for them to win on points, just by holding on to these cap circles. But there's a faster way to win. Just sink the Borodino. I mean, I say, just sink the Borodino. It's a tough battleship. It's actually an extremely tough battleship, especially in a situation like this, where it's able to go bow in. Even if you're firing 16-inch armor piercing at this thing, you are never going to be able to inflict meaningful amounts of damage on it from the front. Because despite the fact that it has a very weak bow, compared to other tier 8 and higher battleships that typically have at least 32mm of bow plating, the Borodino's is only 25mm thick. Which means that you should be able to sit it out from the front with 16 inch armour piercing. But behind that 25mm bow, there is a bulkhead protecting the front or citadel that is 400mm thick. Oh, and I have a confession to make. I have just noticed the Borodino does actually have radar. <laughs> <laughs> Making a complete lie of the statement that I made at the beginning of this battle that the matchmaker for once had actually put two even teams together when in fact it gave the enemy team a carrier and radar. But none of that is going to make any difference here because Floco Loco does not need to survive in order to win this battle. He has two surviving teammates. All he has to do is make sure that the Borodino goes down and he's not even being subtle about it. <laughs> he's going for the ram. He's right there in chat going, choo-choo, <laughs> the Borodino knows it's coming, but there's absolutely nothing he can do about it. If he turned to try to run away, he would have gotten his broadside hammered, so all he can really do is backpedal, bend over, put his head between his knees, and kiss his ass goodbye. Seven kills and victory. Finished off, in style of course, with a ram, Floco Loco, in the Soviet Tier 7, sorry, Tier 8 battleship, the Lenin. 220,000 damage, Confederate, Kraken Unleashed, Devastating Strike by some miracle a Close Quarters Expert Award, and of course a High Calibre, with more than 3,000 base experience. Extremely well played, and congratulations on a great score, and I hope everybody else enjoyed it, because that is it for today. As always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.